Have you ever tried to scroll down a big Excel table and your charts fly off the screen like they're escaping responsibility? Or well, yeah, same here. In this video, we're building a scrollable table in Excel using a scroll bar from the developer tab and an offset formula. This is perfect if you're making a dashboard, an interactive report, or just trying to stop Excel from turning into a never-ending scroll adventure. Here you have a table with 350 rows. You also have charts or whatever cool dashboard stuff you've built. But if you scroll down to see more rows, your visuals move too. First, open a new worksheet by clicking the plus icon down there. Let's name it. Dashboard New. Now, in the empty sheet, we're going to bring in the column titles first, like order ID, customer, product, or whatever your table uses. So click the first cell where you want your scrollable table to begin. Then type an equal sign and click the first header cell from your original table. Press Enter. You'll see that header appears. Then just drag across so the rest of the headers show too. At this point, it looks like a table, but it has no data yet. That's fine. Now we add the scroll bar. This comes from the Developer tab. If you don't see the Developer tab, don't panic. Excel just hides it sometimes, like it's a secret club. You can turn it on by going to File, then Options, then Customize Ribbon and checking the box that says Developer. Once you have the Developer tab, click it. Then click Insert. You're going to see two sections. One is called Form Controls and one is called Active X Controls. This matters a lot. Choose the scroll bar under Form Controls, not Active X. Pick the Form Control scroll bar and draw it next to where your table will be under L column. Usually, people put it on the right side of the table, like a normal scroll bar. Right now, the scroll bar is basically just decoration. We need it connected to a cell so Excel can store a number when you scroll. So right-click the scroll bar and choose Format Control. You'll see things like Current Value, Minimum Value, Maximum Value, and you'll see Cell Link. The Cell Link is the important part. Click in the Cell Link box, then click a cell you don't mind using as a helper cell. I usually pick something far to the side, like N3, or even on a separate sheet so it's out of the way. Press OK. Notice that the arrows can look extremely faint or basically not there. The scroll bar still works. You can drag the thumb, click above below it to jump, etc. If you specifically want obvious arrow buttons, a lot of people use a spin button from form controls instead. It's literally two big arrows. It's also great for beginners because it looks super clear. Now test it. Click the scroll bar arrows or drag the scroll box. That linked cell should change numbers. If it changes, congrats. The scroll bar is officially alive. Now we want the scroll bar numbers to match your data. Let's say your table has 350 rows of orders. If you want the scroll bar to move through those orders, you need a sensible minimum and maximum. So go back to format control. If your first record is order one, or the first row is basically your starting row, set the minimum value to one. That way, when you scroll all the way to the top, your linked cell shows one. For the maximum value, you can temporarily put the last row number like 350. We're going to fix it later to avoid blank rows, but 350 is fine to start with. Press OK. Now comes the part that sounds scary but isn't. The formula. We're going to use offset. Offset is basically Excel's way of saying start here, then move down a certain number of rows and show me what's there. So click the first empty data cell under your headers on your view table. It's cell A2. This is where the first data value will show. Type equal offset. So you start with equal offset parenthesis. Now it wants a starting point. For the starting point, click the first data cell on your original table, not the header. The first real data cell, for example, 
If your table headers are in row 1, then your first data might be in A2. Click that first data cell. This is the reference. Excel adds sheet names like dashboard when your formula is referencing a cell on a different sheet. This is totally normal. It means start from cell A2 on the sheet named dashboard. Comma. Now Excel asks for rows. This is where your scroll bar comes in. For rows, click the helper cell you linked to the scroll bar. Like N3. This means move down however many rows the scroll bar says. Comma. Then it asks for columns. For columns, type 0 because we're not moving left or right. We just want to move down. So your formula looks like start cell, then the scroll cell, then 0. Before you press enter, do one important thing. Lock the scroll cell reference. Otherwise, when you copy the formula, Excel will start pointing to different cells and everything breaks. So, click the scroll cell part inside your formula and press F4. You should see dollar signs like dollar and dollar three. Now, press enter. Let's do a quick test. Move the scroll bar. That cell should change to different values from your original table. If it changes, you're in business. Now, we take that formula and copy it across to fill the rest of the row, so it pulls the other columns too. And then we copy the whole row down to create a nice visible window, like maybe 15 rows or 20 rows, however many you want to display at one time. At this point, when you scroll, the table should move with you, like the rows update while the table stays in place. It's weirdly satisfying. Now, I like to format right away because later you'll forget and then your amounts will look like random numbers and your dates will look like secret codes. So, if you have an amount column, put it into currency format. If you have a date column, set it to a date format. Now, one thing almost everyone sees the first time, when you scroll all the way down, you might start seeing blanks or zeros. That's not Excel being haunted. That's just the scroll bar going too far. Here's what's happening in simple words. The scroll bar maximum value is allowing offset to go past your real data. When offset goes past the end of the table, it starts returning empty values, which look like zeros or blanks. Also, important detail, whatever your scroll bar value is at the bottom, that value becomes the top of your view table. So if the maximum is 350, when you scroll all the way down, row 350 tries to appear at the top and everything below it has nothing to show. That's why you get blanks. So how do we fix it? We set the maximum value so the last real record appears at the bottom of your window not at the top. Here's the easiest way without doing math in your head. Scroll down slowly until you see your last real record show up on the bottom row of your view table. Like if your last record is order 350, you want order 350 to be sitting at the bottom of the window. When you reach that moment, look at your linked helper cell. Whatever number is showing there is the correct maximum. So if your helper cell says 336 when order 350 is perfectly at the bottom, then your maximum should be 336. Another way is to count the visible rows. It's 14, so 350 minus 14 equals to 336. Right click the scroll bar, go back into format control and change maximum value to that number. Now try again, scroll all the way down. You should see the last record at the bottom and no blanks underneath. Scroll back up, you're back to the beginning. Clean and smooth. It's time to copy our charts and move them to the new worksheet.
All right, let's resize them and move them to the right place we want. Great, I will remove the grid lines and make some formatting to the headers. If you're enjoying this scroll bar dashboard trick and you want to level up from I can make a spreadsheet to wow, this looks like real software, check out my Excel dashboard course. I walk you through building clean interactive dashboards step by step, charts, slicers, KPI, cards, layout tips, and all the little details that make your dashboards look polished and professional without spending six hours fighting with alignment. And because you're watching this video, you can grab it for 50% off using the coupon code SCROLL50. The link is in the description. Go check it out and I'll see you inside the course. All right, you did it. You have a scrollable table that behaves like a professional dashboard and your charts no longer run away when you scroll. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.